Okay, so in today's notes, we're mainly going to focus on graphing and then two, writing equations of lines. So I'm going to open up to a Regents Review book so that I have the um, grid, okay? But if you don't have uh, graph paper, all you need to do is take and sketch a Y and an x-axis, okay? I, I'll do a couple on actual graph paper just so you're reminded on how to do this. Otherwise, though, we can just, you know, sketch an axis like this or axes plural, make sure I label, and then go from there. So the first line that I'm going to take a look at, okay, is the equation y equals negative two-thirds x plus one. So remember, the number in front of the x represents something, and this number at the end represents something. And standard form for an equation is equal to our linear equation, y equals mx plus b. So this number here is our m, or our slope. That tells us M how to move from one point to the next. The B is the y-intercept, or the point where we begin. That's our beginning point, and this is how we move. So we would start at 1, right here, and the plot all the other points from here. We move down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Okay, you should only um, graph two more points. I mean, you can do more. So instead of going down to right three, we could do opposite up to left one, two, three, up to one, two, three. You should sketch your line all the way across your grid. Okay, and even potentially draw all the points that are down two over three. Okay, if you only have to graph one line, on a grid, you, there's really no need to label, but you should always label so that you get in the habit. Okay? And then remember, if I grab another color, if I graph two lines, so say I graph the line um, y equals, let's do 3x plus 1. Okay, well we can automatically see they share the same y-intercept. So starting at 1, go up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1, 1, 2, 3, over 1. Okay, so there's my slope. Or down 1, 2, 3, going backwards, left 1, down 1, 2, 3, left 1, down 1, 2, 3, left 1. Okay. Now in this case, um, we'd want to label both lines. So this is y equals 3x plus 1. Now if you had a question that said to solve this system and it gave you these two equations, right, if it said to solve, then your answer is going to be the point of intersection. So this point is 0, 1. Okay, when we did this by hand in the last, in the previous day, in the last video, you can label, we solve this algebraically or by hand, so you can write it as a point, but remember we can also say x equals 0 and y equals 1. So what that means is if I plug those points into these equations, x is 0, negative 2 thirds times 0 is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, y is 1, it works. 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1. It checks as well. So this is what we did yesterday in solving a system, but instead of algebraically, we're doing it graphically. Okay? So that kind of covers a couple different sections. So if I had to, if I was given a line, okay, so if I was given the line, I'm going to pick two points, any two points, I'll pick this one. Okay, so here's our given line, and you had to write the equation. 
Well, the first thing you want to do is to state the slope or the m. So we can see here we're going down 1, 2, 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3 over 1. So down 3 over 1. Because remember, slope is equal to change of y over change of x. That's our rate of change, where the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, there's the change in y, the difference over the change of x. So you want to know your slope, you want to know your y-intercept, so our y-intercept right here is at 1, and then putting it together in the form y equals m x plus b. You don't need to write the slope as a fraction, but that just gives you the change. We're going down 3 for the at, or the y rather, for every increase of 1 in the x. So every movement 1 on the x-axis, we go down 3. Okay. Um, moving to a question like, okay, so let's write down this example. So what is the equation of the line that passes through the point for negative 4. So we know a point that's on the line and the line has a slope of negative 3 fourths. So if we write down what we need, so the equation is y equals mx plus b. That's the equation of a line. So the y and the x stay the same. Okay, the y and the x represent all the points on the line. So what we need to know are the m and the b. And we have, we know our slope. So we know our slope is negative 3 fourths. What we don't know is the b. But if we look at what's given, a point gives us an x value and a y value. So if I plug those in, so y, negative 4, equals m, negative three-fourths times x of four plus b, we end up with just an equation with one variable. Okay, in a one variable equation we can solve. Doing the math here, three-fourths times four, you can do that on the calculator, three-fourths of four is negative three. So therefore adding three to isolate or solve for b, we get negative one equals b. Now we have, or you have, the two items that you need, the y-intercept and slope, to write your final answer. So our answer is y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 1. So that's in um, y equals mx plus b form. Okay? Looking at uh, a different type of question. Still the same concept, uh, but this one says, what is an equation of a line, or of the line, that passes through the points 0, negative 7, and 5, negative 1. And it says, put your answer in fully reduced form. Well, the first thing we need to do is calculate the slope. So remember, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here are the y values. So we're going to do negative 1 minus negative 7 over 5 minus 0. Okay, we take the second one, subtract the first. Second, subtract the first. Remember, when you subtract a negative, that turns positive, so we end up with six fifths. Okay? And if we look closely, we can see that we're given the y intercept. Okay? That's not always the case, so I'm going to do it as if I wasn't. Then I calculate the b by doing y equals mx plus b. And you can plug in any point you want, so I'll plug in this one. OK? 
okay? So negative 1 equals 6 fifths times x plus b. So we should get this point. That's why I plugged in this one, because we should get a y value or a y-intercept value of negative 7. So negative 1 equals 6 plus b. And I hate b's, actually, because my b's look like 6's. Subtract 6, and we get our y-intercept is negative 7. So putting it all together, the equation is y equals 6 fifths x minus 7. And we did get it checked. We did get the same answer. Okay. Our next section, um, graphing linear inequalities. So I'm going to go back to the Regents book. Well, actually, no, I'll do this by hand because you may not all have graph paper. So we're going to graph. So y, x. We're going to graph the inequality. So y greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x minus 7. Okay, so we start at negative 7. So down here at negative 7. And from there, okay, we're going to go down 4 over 3. Well, since I can't go down 4 over 3, I'm going to go up 4 over 3, up 4 over 3, up 4 over 3. Now, I don't know, right? I'm sketching this not on graph paper. So I my points didn't even line up. So I'm going to make them bigger. So I know it looks like this. And I know key thing is it's going to hit the y-axis at negative 7. And I also know that I go down 4 over 3 in order to graph with our slope. Okay? But now because of the inequality piece, we're going to shade. So I always like to test a point. 0, 0 because that's the easiest point you did math with. Test a point by plugging it in is 0 greater than or equal to, well, negative 4 thirds, because anything times 0 as well is also 0. So is 0 greater than or equal to 0 minus 7? So 0 greater than or equal to negative 7, this is true. Okay? So I'm going to make note that we test the point 0, 0 to know where to shade. Because that's true, we're going to shade on oh, a couple of other things, too, that I should have paid closer attention to, but I, or I need to speak about, is I knew it was a solid line because of the greater than or equal to. If it's not greater than or equal to, so let's write solid line, and down here we want to shade, because it was true, where 0, 0 is. But if it wasn't the greater than or equal to, then we would have a dotted line here. So let's shade. We're going to want to shade where, right, it's equal to. So there's the inequality. We typically graph, right, or shade or label right in our shaded area. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, let's add an, uh, an inequality to this, and let's add a um, dotted line. So let's add y, uh, let's do greater than, uh, let's do 2x plus 8. I'm just making it up. So starting up here at 8, right, we graph up 2 over 1. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and this is going to be a dotted line. Right? So this is dotted. In the shade, I still uh, test 0, 0. So when I plug in 0, is 0 greater than 2 times 0 plus 8? So is 0 bigger than 0 plus 8? 0 greater than 8? This is false. So we don't shade. So do not shade where 0, 0 is. So 0, 0 is right here. We would want to shade on the other side. 
and extend all the way across your grid. Where they overlap, remember we put that big S. And I like to graph inequalities in color so that um, we can see that overlap. And then we go back and label, so off this red was this inequality, and then we label within this space that inequality, and then in this space, y anywhere, just as long as it's not in the overlap. And so we have our three sections. And then some questions will state, state a point in the solution set, which would be any point you want in this overlap of the two colors. Okay? And we did solving a linear system. Okay. So then the last part that I want to talk about is a question like this in Delta Math, in that last section. So the inequalities, or right, let's write down the question. So which point would be a solution to the system of linear inequalities shown below. Okay, so the two inequalities are y less than 3x plus 8 and y greater than negative 2x plus 3. And our answer choices I'll put in red. So one answer choice is negative 6, 0. The other choice is negative 12, 4, and then negative 12, negative 10, and then 4, 10. So which point would be a solution? Well, it has to work for both. So you just plug them in. So um, let's plug it in here first. And I like to do easy points first. Let's try 4, 10. Is, so plug in the 10 for y is 10 larger than negative 2 times x, which is a 4, plus 3. And then if you want to save yourself some time, just go to your calculator and do negative 2 parenthesis 4 plus 3. And that we get negative 5. So is 10 larger than negative 5? Yes, it works. So let's plug in the point here. Okay, I'll do it on this side since I don't have much room. Plugging in again, 4, 10. So is 10 smaller than 3 times 4 plus 8? So 3 times 4 plus 8, again, you can just do that on your calculator, and we get 20. And 10 is smaller than 20. So that works, okay? So it doesn't always work where you pick the correct answer first, okay? So the answer is this, but let's pick another point just to show it doesn't work. So let's show with this one because it's easy to work with 0. Is the y value of 0? bigger than negative 2 times x, which is negative 6, plus 3. So is 0 larger? Well, negative times negative is a positive 12 plus 3, and we can see 0 is not bigger than 15. Whoops, there we go. So 0 is not bigger than 15, so that doesn't work. You plug it into one, it doesn't work. You don't need to plug it into the other because it has to work for both. So this point here, I just randomly checked. Again, because it's both positives, I wanted to do the math with positives and not negatives. And it worked out. Okay? Have a good day. Bye-bye.